Al Jazeera Podcasts. Today, a deep dive into DeepSeek, the Chinese AI company that's disrupting the tech world. Aftershocks were felt from Washington to Wall Street and Silicon Valley. Signs that China may be catching up to the United States in the AI race sent tech stocks plunging. Move over, ChatGPT. Deep Seek is in the spotlight. I'm Kevin Hurton, and this is The Take. My name is Taiwei Chen. I am a tech reporter at MIT Tech Review, and I am based in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, well, Taiwei, welcome to the take. Um, look, a week ago, very few people outside of China had even heard of DeepSeek. Yet this company was able to cause this panic in Silicon Valley and Wall Street. Wall Street rattled by fears that China has caught up to America on artificial intelligence. Nvidia leading the sell-off down about fifteen percent, tanking on the news that DeepSeek has an AI model similar to ChatGPT, but operating at a fraction of the cost. Be honest, did you see this coming? Honestly, yes and no. Um, so at MIT Tech Review, I published an article that was uh, relatively early on to the development of this hype. Um, and we are only able to get it out so quickly because I started uh, following the company's development before the new model is even dropped. So the company, although relatively unknown globally, um, is already having a little hype within the Chinese AI world and uh, some AI researchers community. So so yes and no is your answer. But I think if you really had, you probably would have shorted NVIDIA's stock and you'd be on a beach instead of on the take today. Oh, but, uh, completely. I completely <laughs> didn't see the, 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 the stock market, uh, the whole hype happening uh, and the AI world panicking about it. That That's... So, um, all right. <laughs> At its most basic level, what is DeepSeek and and what sets it apart from its more famous U.S. competitors like ChatGPT and Google Gemini? Right. So DeepSeek is a Chinese AI company that is funded in 2023. So very, very young, incubated by a hedge fund. And um, they have uh, 100 to 200 people uh, and is very, very research focused. Um, they built this AI model called R1 um, that is uh, state-of-the-art, matches the performance of ChatGPT-01 or even exceeded um, the newest model of ChatGPT in a lot of benchmarks. Uh, and the most impressive thing being they made it at a fraction of the cost of what OpenAI spent. They say it was built in two months for less than $6 million. It's now the number one app on the App Store. The, the model is completely open sourced, which means the company has published the research results uh, on the internet for anyone to access uh, and for researchers to study. Uh, and besides the main model, they also release um, six other distilled smaller versions. Uh, and the smallest one you can even run on a regular laptop. Mm. So what would the company look like if you went to the offices? Where Where is it located? Um, what's the general vibe? Uh, Deep Sea, the company, is based in Hangzhou, which is this like, new tech hub that is to our strive uh, from Shanghai and in East mm -hmm. China. The founder of Deep Sea, uh, from what I heard, is a very geeky person obsessed with research and AI and computer science. Uh, Liang Wenfeng graduated from Zhejiang University, which is a research-focused top-tier university in China, and recruited this bunch of uh, very young, smart people into this new AI startup. Uh, and his ambition is to build AGI, which is Artificial General Intelligence, mm. uh, a powerful AI that is able to um, uh, almost replicate human intelligence and aid us in uh, everything. Mm. Um, so, Saiwei, let's talk about how DeepSeek pulled this off despite the U.S. trying to shut China out, right? AI runs on these ultra powerful, crazy expensive microprocessors. Back in 2022, then President Joe Biden basically said, no fancy chips for you, China. Banned China from using these semiconductor chips made anywhere in the world with US tools. So they're at this disadvantage. How did DeepSeek manage to do more with less? Right. So uh, the US has historically prided itself on uh, the access to abundant computing power. And if you know anything about large language models or generative AI these days, it's a 
hugely energy consuming. Um, like the the power, uh, the electricity. Uh, and the computers that we're spending to train AI is um, astronomical. Um, uh, and that is why that uh, the U.S. Uh, has put a sanction on China, um, prohibiting NVIDIA, which is like the maker of all the advanced semiconductor chips, to sell China the top tier, most high functioning chips. Uh, and as a result, Chinese AI companies can only have access to a lower performing kind of chip. So people tend to think this would like uh, make China more stunted in the progress of AI development. But this shortage and constraint in resources is actually exactly what prompted uh, Liang Wenfeng, the founder of DeepSeek, to, to start this company and this operation. And so the lore uh, on Chinese media, uh, and we can kind of only go off their words with it, is uh, Liang, the founder, uh, acquired a stockpile. And according to Chinese media, at least 10,000 high-performing NVIDIA chips before the sanction was on. So mm. um, after the sanction and after seeing how other Chinese AI companies are facing a computing power shortage, uh, Liang decided that maybe I should put this resource to a good use and, and start training my own AI. And because of how like limiting the resource is, they... Uh, and according to the sources I talked to, deep seek researchers had to uh, rework their training process. They managed to uh, simplify a lot of the process and the training uh, by like clean, elegant engineering. And this is also what like amazed a lot of re AI researchers in the world because yeah. they didn't know that, oh, like such good results can be achieved with such little resources. Yeah. So, I mean, how how much of a disadvantage is that? 10,000 chips kind of sounds like a lot of chips to me, but if that's all you're dealing with, how does that uh, differ from how many chips that something like ChatGPT is dealing with? We we actually do not exactly know how many chips that DeepSeek has. There's a, in fact, there's a whole debate happening uh, on Twitter, on different places. There are American researchers in disbelief. Uh, they don't believe that DeepSeek has done that on so little resources. Uh, and we're seeing people, including Alexander Wang, who's the founder of Scale AI, um, claiming that DeepSeek at least have 20,000 chips or like 40,000 um, wow. besides like 10,000, which is what they claim to have. I think these are all speculations, but what we know and what we can see from the, the open source research that they publish is that they created a lot of innovative structure uh, and uh, actual new findings, including something they call MOE, uh, which is short for a mixture of expert structure. Hmm. Um, and uh, this means that, so for, for a large language model, um, they have a lot of expert system. Like uh, it can have a geography expert, it can have a climate expert or a, a political expert. Um, and this led to a problem, which is overthink. So AI can overthink. It can spend a long time on this question and give you a wrong answer. Yeah. Or I'm sure like a lot of people have seen funny social media chatters about how AI can like generate an, a whole essay, but then would get the most simple question wrong. Like if you ask the AI, how many letters are there in the word letter? Uh, and it will get it terribly wrong after a long time of thinking. What DeepSeek did is basically they found a way to get the AI model to only activate the relevant experts. Um, so that not just saved the time that it used to get the answer, but also uh, make it so much more efficient. Like if I ask it, what is the capital of China? It will probably only, it will probably think first, this is a simple factual question. And I only need to consult with the geography expert without triggering everything else in the system. We'll have more with Tsai Wei Chen after the break. So, Tsai Wei, perhaps not surprisingly, um, many U.S. businessmen like Elon Musk are, you know, trying to cast doubt on DeepSeek's budget and chip claims. Um, what do you make of the pushback some of these U.S. companies are are giving DeepSeek? Right. Uh, I think a lot of these doubts are valid because ever since the hype, ever since R1 was dropped, we actually 
um, has never seen an interview from the company. Some companies uh, and researchers are doubting they only succeeded because they're piggybacking on OpenAI success and they're using ChatGPT's answer to to train DeepSeek. I think partially um, that is probable because um, OpenAI success uh, obviously uh, came first and inspired researchers globally to to match that. Uh, but I think it's also, if you look at their research that they published, uh, you should be able to replicate that process on your computer. And it, I think that is another incredible thing um, that DeepSeek has done, is that it's not gatekeeping its research results. Um, they have like published all their uh, all their training process and all their findings open source it under the MIT license, uh, which is a very uh, permitting open source license that will invite all the researchers to uh, to learn from it. So um, I think that is why uh, like it caught some bitterness uh, from some U.S. companies because their previous narrative is uh, you need uh, like massive resource, uh, uh, which is like not necessarily a scientific uh, conclusion, but uh, also related to their business operation yeah. uh, to to build this advanced technology. Remarkable. It's remarkable. Okay. Um, on the matter of the Joe Biden sanctions, is it too early to say that they've backfired, that this deep seek news shows that the sanctions may actually end up harming the very companies the U.S. was trying to protect? Um, I think that is a great question. And in my personal opinion, I think it might be a little early to say. Um, I think what is evident and clear is that I do think the sanctions are not working exactly as expected. Mm. Um, I don't know if they're harming the U.S. companies, but uh, I think it's safe to say that it's not weakening. Chinese companies or Chinese AI industry in a way um, that the U.S. government has intended. Um, and instead, what we're seeing is that it's pushing a lot of Chinese companies in interesting directions. Yeah. Um, uh, and the first one is, of, of course, this focus on efficiency, this focus on um, doing clean, elegant engineering and achieve uh, maximum result at the lowest resources. And besides that, we are also seeing um, a trend of like collaboration, resource pooling, yeah. and consolidation. So, Taiwei, if, if there is one thing that President Donald Trump cares about, it's the stock market, right? Which took a big mm -hmm. hit here on this news. He's aligned himself closely with the big tech CEOs, and he called this a wake up call. The release of deep seek AI from a Chinese company should be a wake-up call for our industries that we need to be laser-focused on competing to win. My question is, what does that look like? Because recently, the U.S. government strategy involved spending billions, uh, bu buying up all of these chips. They even talking about a nuclear power plant for Meta. Um, Saiway, do you think that this spending is going to get a fresh look here? Are they going to have to change course, the U.S.? Actually, yes. I think I think the emergence of deep seek is a great um not not just wake up call for for the US company but for the AI industry in the world and a great moment to reflect on the energy use and spending here because previously um people sort of take it for granted that AI this frontier technology uh, we are just supposed to um like we're supposed to use up all the resources and like all the electricity, even a nuclear plant yeah. to to develop it, to to scale it um, infinitely uh, and not considering what goes into it. I think DeepSeek really changed the narrative a little bit and made the industry rethink that maybe it's cool to use uh, less resource instead of more uh, to yield the best result. And maybe... Um, to, to do it in a nimble, effective way um, is, is actually what's preferred at this moment because we actually haven't seen AI uh, and AI as a technology has any mass market adoption or has any proof that it will benefit humanity in a huge way. So I think like these days I see a lot of arguments um, and people rethinking um, how do we evaluate what is worth it uh, when we invest in these uh, new technologies and um, how much of AI's benefit is 
only Silicon Valley hype and how much it is like actual beneficial to humanity. And yeah. where could we like? There are a lot of other things that could use that technology. Is putting is putting heavy strain on um, like the power grid and also the environment. Yeah.、Um... We do a daily news podcast, so we're right in the news cycle. Oftentimes, things happen, and it's hard to know what the context will be historically, what this moment means, you know, in the long term. But this one feels like people assessed it pretty quickly. Do you think that this will be a moment in the history of AI and the history of tech that people remember for a long time? I think so. I think so. I think,、um, although, like DeepSeek is、um, has been. Already known to people within the tech community, this is this is the first moment that it entered,、uh, it entered the world stage and became like publicly known. I think this week, DeepSeek became the number one downloaded app、uh, in a lot of app stores globally,、um, and、uh, I think this is a moment of reckoning not just for the tech and business world, but for、um, a regular、uh, person、uh, that just focus. On、uh, their daily life and care about the stock market、um, to 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 rethink、uh, like maybe the U.S. should not be taking its technology leadership for granted and、uh, maybe open AI is not the only way to go when we look for an AI agent to assist us and、uh, China also become a force to be、uh, reckoned with. Tai Wei, thank you so much for coming on the take today. Thank you for having me. And that's the take. So, have you used DeepSeek yet? Well, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to catch more episodes like this, make sure you're following our YouTube playlist, which is right here. That's where you're going to find all of our recent content, which is updated regularly, so you never miss an episode. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button so you stay in the loop with all things Al Jazeera English. <laughs>